Did you just see that one jump? Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo and Pine Brook Sanctuary. I hope you're all doing well. So hopefully you can tell that the zoo is looking a little bit more decorated. So in the last episode, I think it was, or maybe the episode before that, I put up a prop building video of what's happening here. We have some floating trees. Let's move that down. I did a prop building video where I built loads and loads of different things um, from ATM kind of shelters, um, conservation boards, um, shop shelves. We have also a cover for our donation bins and some little guest security as well to say like, don't shout at the animals and do not feed them. We also have some education points as well. Is that upside down? No. More food places as well. And we've also, this is really high, some shelters for our solar panels as well. I did also want to show you a little garden and veg patch. And I'm so proud of it. I think it's really cute. So you come around here. Now, we're just gonna have to make believe that this is a gate, okay? And the staff can come in here and we have a little vegetable patch. So let's have a look around. We've got a fruit and veg patch. Let's go down so we're not in the trees. And we have some apple trees, some orange trees as well. And we have a little banana tree at the back. The same as this one over here with our grapevine, but you can get ones or you can get the trees without the grapes fully formed. So I thought we'll just kind of make believe that they're apple trees, banana trees and orange trees. Um, I've put in some little boxes there, some of the, some of the apples are overflowing, um, just so it makes it look like the uh, keepers or the gardeners have already come round and picked off all the fruit that they possibly can off of the trees. And we also have a little compost bin and another couple of hoses over here with a little bucket. Now we have tomatoes and melons just in here. We've also got a little grapevine. And over here we have some little seats for the gardeners, a little scarecrow and some little fruit baskets along with the watering can and another little bucket. So we have our cauliflowers, we have our potatoes and we have our little carrots as well. Now what I did with the potatoes was kind of sink some of them into the ground, kind of move them around a little bit, have them poking up out of the ground as well. So it looks like the gardener's already been in and kind of moved the, the soil and the earth out of the way to try and get them up. And I've also left some gaps in for the carrots. So it also again looks like the gardeners have already been round and picked a couple. We have some pumpkins and some marrows down here, and some wheelbarrows, and again the same over here, exactly the same over in this side. But yeah, I thought I really like that. I just I just thought oh, it was something a little bit different, and it just kind of fills in this little bit of a gap as well. I've also decorated this area down here. Let's go down so we can actually see what I've done. I've put in our two little donation bins, our decorated our conservation boards, and we've got our education and security kind of signs down here as well. Um, just so little children or sometimes adults don't just chuck over food into our giant otter habitat. I've also put in some little animal signs as well just so the guests kind of know where they're going. Um, they're not perfect, some some things don't necessarily point the right direction, but general gist of things. Put in some little shelters as well. So I'm hoping you did enjoy the cinematics of the last video, but I thought I'd just go back over everything just so you can have a really good look at all of them as well. So we have some toilets over here and some more ATMs in our main kind of entrance. And we come over here. And you know, I keep saying that I'm building little things for the um, children to look at, like where we have the sun and we have the cloud, and then we have a little picture of the animals. This is what I was kind of had in mind. So the children come, would kind of come up here, they'd grab a little clipboard, a little pen, and go over to the tickets and pay their little one pound for the activity book. And then they would take it with them around the zoo and see if they could spot as many animals hiding in the habitats as possible so yeah i thought that was really cute um all of these are just the little uh keeper checklists that we have sometimes hanging on the walls 
by the staff entrance areas. These are actually um, shutter hinges. I couldn't find anything that really kind of represented like a pen. Um, so I just had to improvise and yeah, that, they're pens. <laughs> so you, the guests are gonna walk for it through it, but let's just unpause. So what I did to stop the guests kind of just wandering in without technically paying, I put in a little bench here, that, which is where the member of staff would be sitting to, so they could check their tickets before they went in. And they just have like two little roped off areas here so they can lift off the rope, let guests go through and carry on from there. Um, still have the little information section there, some little lights and some little plat pots. I have, let me show you in the background, you may have noticed, uh, I have put in a massive line <laughs> everything that I've already built. Um, I've done this just so I don't have to keep flicking through all the blueprints that I've got because I've got my blueprints and there's so many of them and it's hard to kind of figure out the one that we're looking for. I've left them out here and we can just grab them as and when we please. Um, so if you do see a lot of notifications saying, oh, there's no, it doesn't get any power. This is the main reason why. This is our toilet. So we've also got our exhibit shell, our ATM. Oh, I haven't shown you. This is our education talk as well. Um, it's just got some little food bag down there and a little hose pipe as well. I want to do something a little bit different for this particular education talk. I thought the educators could, if they really wanted to, or if the game would allow it, they could sit down or maybe the kids could sit down if they wanted to. So we have all of our spades, our forks, our shovels, our brushes, our rakes buckets, little gardening baskets as well. And over here is kind of some food storage and things like that with baskets as well. Then we also have our gardening patch and our photo opportunity, our information shell, our balloons and hats shell, food and drink, our little wall as well um, that I'm gonna kind of try and use throughout the place. We also have this one here, which is an animal shelter. So I'll put those in some habitats, our solar panel or um, amenities shell, securities for our guests and our donation bins, conservation boards, general kind of decoration, our education boards and general kind of other bits and bobs for the guests as well. Have I actually put one of these in the zoo? So what I have done is I have put all of those on the Steam Workshop. Now the link to my Steam Workshop is in the description down below. So please do check that out. If you want anything that I have created, it's all there. All of the blueprints that I have ever created, whether that's what you guys have seen or anything I've done on my own, they're all on there. So you can have a little flick through and grab anything that you want. You are more than welcome. Without further ado, let me stop blabbering on and let's decide what we're actually going to do. I think it's time that we put in another animal. So our horses are doing really well, standing in their food. Do we have any babies? Nope. Oh, okay. So we have offspring due May year 31. So that's not too far away either. Let's have a look on our animals and let's just see where we are. Okay, so that is everybody there and we are going to quick trade and we're going to get a nice 6,000 extra. What is our price nowadays? 18, I think we might be able to put that up to 20 and maybe 15. Let research, how are we doing? Completely full. Okay, so I'm thinking we have plenty of money so let's try and do a couple more marketing plans. Family hour, I think for this one. Let's go with banner adverts. Lovely. So that's going to really take care of our marketing. So that's great. What I also wanted to have a look for was the prices of our information center. Also, you may have noticed, oh, look at our monkeys in the background. That is a lot quieter around here now. It's because I'm taking out the music that was hidden in some of the plant pots because it was just too loud and it was giving everybody a headache <laughs> that was um, watching the videos, let alone what our guests thought. So I've changed those. So let's have a look. Everything's too expensive. Okay, that's fine. 
first of all, what we are going to do is scroll down and we're going to synchronize costs to all the shops. So every single information center that we have is now going to have these prices. So audio guide, I think maybe let's put that down to £1.50. Adoption pack cheap, £5 and £10 for a normal. And then I'd say probably £15 for an expensive adoption pack. Now we're doing okay for money. So I would much rather have happy guests rather than making a lot of profit from our information center. So I'm thinking maybe let's do a pound for our umbrellas. So blue, green, purple, red, yellow umbrellas are all now one pound and they are all synchronized. Okay, so guest happiness, 50% of the customers are happy. Okay, so the staff are all looking okay. I am going to train all of them now. So our work zone, so what I've done is I've um, updated everything to cleaners, educators, keepers, mechanics, vendors and vets. I bothered assigning the security to a work zone because I wasn't sure whether or not if I just left them with no work zone, they would just go to whatever staff room they wanted and they would just man the whole park. I'm not sure. Let me know if you think I should put them in a in a work zone and just select everything for them. We have our staff room perks as well. Okay, so I've just saw a notification that our otter has now matured. So let's find the otter. Here we are. So we are going to go over and take a little look at our otter they were swimming nicely now what we are going to do is release the animal to the wild really good genes so we can release that one okay right then so i am thinking today for this particular area just so we can get this these things out of the way is putting in the water buffalo I, i'm hoping this is going to be a big enough space and let's have a look so one male and 29 females so we'll do our normal ratio one male two females so confident with humans fantastic but they can't enter the habitat the number of offspring per mate is one so one two three one two so not that much land requirement so that is all good now i'll let you have a little read as well so you can pause what we do need to do is Grab some water buffalo. Okay. Oh, this one's not bad. I'm for 157 conservation credits. Age is quite good. And that one's exactly the same. So I'm thinking let's go with this one. And then we just need two more females. This one's the best. And then the others are still qu are quite low. So this one's 50% fertility and immunity. This one's 33% fertility, but got a good size and good immunity but this one's kind of generally good overall so let's grab this one too okay then we're gonna send these to our quarantine area oh and just in time for the rain okay, let's pop them in there and what we'll do is we'll just wait for the rain to pass and then we will get on building this habitat
okay everybody we have now finished our water buffalo habitat and this one is just playing in the mud which is really cute <laughs> i'm splashing in it <laughs> yes we have a male and a female in here and this is their habitat so obviously they like a lot of water so we did put in um a really big kind of lake and um, they have their little mud area and their tree scratching tree as well they've got a little outside shelter um along with other bits of enrichment also. so it's not like an amazing kind of habitat like with lots to look at or lots to um show you all um it is just very big open water area so let's come through here and i'll show you the inside area it's nothing special in here just their bedding and oh there's one in here and they've got some a little bit of enrichment items here and here and a little water trough as well so they can come in and have a little drink just trying to keep it a little bit simpler um i have come through and put in some food drink and some shops just to get some kind of customers down here i will put some decorations in this little section here there you are we can see again <laughs> And I did put in a little seating area for the guests to come and sit at. And they also have a viewing point in here as well. But I'll tell you what I didn't do is I didn't put in any of our donation bins or anything like that. So no one's given us any money for these particular ones at the moment. So let's sink that in and let's also put one, say here. Now, do we want to put it right there? Probably not. So maybe this one, because we don't want it to completely cover, like so the guests can't see the animals eating. So I think one of one of them will be perfectly fine. And let's put another one down here, and we will then go and grab the donation bins. Okay, so we want one there, and oh, it's not going to fit in very well, but that's fine. I'll move it in a second. Okay, now what do we need? Some education. So we can copy this one here because it's right next door. And we can put this in. I'm probably going to put one. I'm just going to maybe wedge them all together. Because we know our guests love dropping litter everywhere. And maybe actually let's put some over here by the shops. The one there and one there. Just in time for the rain. Let's put one on the edge just there. And one there. Look! Already dropping litter everywhere. We'll put one hiding around the corner there as well. A massive staff area. There's only two things in it. Um, so what I might do is create a few staff areas and kind of put them over here with our prop and building stash of stuff that we've got. Um, maybe a small kind of staff building um, one, and then one maybe big size just kind of like this or something perhaps okay everybody i think i'm going to call this episode a day i do hope you liked it please leave any suggestions and comments and feedbacks and anything that i may have missed down in the comment section below it's i um often do miss things so please do let me know and let me know of any animals that you're looking forward to seeing in our endangered list it will be really good to know what you're most looking forward to Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I will catch you in the next one. Oh, oh, did you just see that one jump?